Hello, Froggy here, and today we'll be checking out the Tree of Silver Wings in the Root of Nightmares raid. You'll need a post-third encounter checkpoint. That is, a checkpoint immediately after third encounter, not a fourth encounter checkpoint. We're going to be using an interdimensional res breach to break the box. In the third cataclysm load, we can't use the hole back here since the encounter room is somewhat active. But luckily, just orbs showed me a handy hole over here. We just need to go around the back side of the room here and jump over the first bit and then drop down a little over here and then just go right back <laughs> right back up and you're out we'll be setting our IRB point back this way on one of the vines the vines inside the room are actually too close to the box but luckily this one is just far enough want to walk into the wall here and there is a handy dandy kill barrier so you don't even have to use ricochet rounds how convenient now we just need to die to the cataclysm load luckily that is pretty easy to do as well we just need to get back on top on a Grapple Hunter, I could of course just Grapple Fly there, but this is doable on any class. At least, breaking the boxes. If you want to go far, you're probably going to want to be on a Hunter. We're just going to be walking on top of this vine to get over to the Cataclysm 3 load. There are, in fact, three different cataclysms, which is all sorts of fun for saying what load you're in. But I tend to just go with the numbering convention for the order you reach them in. Sensible enough? You're going to want to stay up top until you've gone back past these spiky things. Otherwise, there's a chance you'll end up in an unpleasant turn-back area. But once you're in the clear, you should drop down to the side, because it is fairly easy to die to the load there. I tend to have the most luck just uh, crouch-walking along the side of the vines. The load is right about here. And there we go. If all goes smoothly, your ghost should be here. But sometimes things don't go smoothly. If you end up not dying to the Cataclysm load, you're going to want to go back and try again. You can hit the Macrocosm load without dying from on top of the vines. It's just mildly inconvenient with not being able to see the outside of the vine structure. You'll find the load a little bit past the little bit here that you need to jump over. If you're lucky, you'll hit the load and survive. If that happens, you can simply turn around and try again. If you somehow end up in Cataclysm, say by accidentally respawning, you'll have a little barrier in between you and the hole to get back out. You'll want to hit the load in the air and die before you set a spawn point to get back through the nice plant sphincter. Luckily, the default is located on the other side. And if you're real lucky, you'll have a spawn all the way back at the beginning. And you'll just have to hit the IRB route again. Once your ghost is all set, it's time for the auto res. The auto res triggers as soon as you open the door at the end of the light and dark puzzle. 
If you manage to mess this one up, there is a second auto res. That one triggers right as you approach the boss arena. Convenient that we have a double without joining allies. But we only need one for this. And with that, we're out of box. Don't head in that direction or you'll rapidly find yourself back in. You can, however, stick around here for your teammates to join. Hello, Henry. Well, now that there's someone else here to wait, I'm gonna head to higher ground. The first place that I managed to get out of the box here was within that vine. Unfortunately, the inside of that vine is not the outside, and there was no easy way to get between the two. But luckily, the final spot that we found was much more convenient. For the vine, we had to die in air, marking the area with mountaintop shots. I went all the way to that tip over there, hoping I'd be able to res breach out. But no such luck. I did get this very neat view, at least. Let's go see what we can see out here. First up, this tendril is solid. Are all of them. We've got a nice close one in front of us, so let's go check. Almost there. Guardian down. So you can generally get a good idea using ricochet rounds. I didn't use them here because I'm silly. I would recommend using caution when checking Guardian because down. it's very easy to lose track of your grapple point when you're passing through intangible objects. In general, these sort of tendrils are solid if they come from one of the playable spaces. Kind of like the one to our left that kind of comes from the boss arena. Let's go check that one out. The kill floor is way, way below us. But, unfortunately, grapple doesn't recharge in the air after a grapple. So if you mess up and don't have a super to catch your fall, you'll be falling for a good long time. Just going for a nice, gentle landing here. Not super easy with high lift. Well, sorry, high jump. My tighted instincts catching up with me there again. But anyways, you can run up a lot of the top of this, and you don't have to worry about the box barrier until you're over the highest point, which a uh, Senreb jam was nice enough to check for me. Mm, bit too steep to climb easily now. So it's grapple climbing time. Currently, I'm heading over to that tower that juts out of the boss arena to see if it's solid. It probably is, given that it's connected to all that, uh, solid land. And it would be weird for part of the object to be solid while the rest is not. Once again, we want to be very careful with our landing, particularly because the box barrier is definitely below us, and if we happen to hit a solid surface in there, it's going to be rather annoying to get back out of box. And, well, that's... 
definitely solid, but definitely does not want me to stand on it. Yeah, that's not happening. Maybe... Get this upper area. <laughs> nice view of the tree here. But I'm sure we're going to manage a better one in a bit. Final approach. And we're down. Looks like you can stand here. Gives you a nice little view of the Nezarak Arena. And the tree. That tree is quite far away, but we'll be heading there next. You can see quite a lot from up here, including, I guess, the jumping puzzle area over there. And I guess first is kind of the same as last. They're probably in about the same location anyways. Oh, oh whoop, whoops. Got a little distracted there. Luckily, the super will save you every once in a while when it comes up. I've uploaded a separate video with the unedited flight over to the tree if you want to see how long it is in real time. But for this video, I'm just going to show you the highlights. You can see we are a fair bit closer now. And you can see there's all sorts of kind of darkness city structures out in the kind of scrambled section of the pyramid. Closer still. And you can see the like twisty stem and the kind of roots tearing through the pyramid. And the darkness city that is right below us at this point. I think I actually went too high there. Unfortunately, now we're all the way back. Luckily, what I said before about vines that pass through playable areas holds true here. This vine pass through the boss arena. And as you can see, ricochet rounds bounce off it. So we can see how far along this one goes. Just gotta land safely here. It would be quite unfortunate to uh, get a physics staff to it. It's been happening a lot to me on my Hunter, specifically. Well, let's see how far this thing goes. You get a very nice view of the tree from here. Oh, and the little kind of jumping platform things. Looks like we're off to a bit of a rocky start here. But hopefully it'll smooth out in a, a little bit. At the very least, we do have a spawn point set. And now, the long, long walk. But on the plus side, we're setting a bunch of spawn points so we don't have to do the full grapple distance again. Now, we gave up a little bit of height, but definitely worth it for this amount of distance. Let's see if we can just land up here and keep on going this thing stretches for ages if you look above we're pretty much under the edges of the tree well 
Looks like we might be at the end of the line. But wait, there's more! Turns out uh, a lot of the other objects are not actually solid. Yeah, but this time we are actually at the end of this particular vine. There's another one below us, but I don't think I want to give up that much height because we uh, have a lot of intangible city to check out on top of uh, where we are now. You know, after a few hours worth of this grapple flying business, it's almost more relaxing than sword flying. You don't have to worry about it running out of it, which is nice. Only problem is if you miss a grapple. As you could probably guess, none of these buildings are solid. Or at least none of the ones I checked. There are many of them. And, you know, we'll never, uh, count them all out. Especially after the solid horse statues in the middle of nowhere in the, uh, previous raid darkness city we encountered. Might as well check everything. Now this one's pretty interesting looking. You got like a, uh, a building that's just been joined off by uh, one of these tendrils or roots or whatever this is. My safety net's recharged. I'd be a little bit careful, of course, with the intangible structures just because I have lost quite a few of these flights to uh, entering one at the wrong moment and losing track of my gravel point. I might as well check out these buildings before we head to the next one. And we are well under the tree now. It's all kind of warped a bit. I wonder if that's to make it look much larger at a distance than it uh, actually is in game. There goes two towers there. Mostly going towards them because they are slightly different than the other structures I've flown by, and different structures could be solid. Those ones aren't, though. Well, let's head on over to the next batch. And this is why we like our hunter seedlings. You get your super back a surprising amount of times on this flight. And the next batch of city. Got a little bit more of a red glow to this area. The box ex The true edge extends an insane distance. Almost makes me wonder if at some point we'll be exploring an area like this. It's just so unusual for the true edge to be so far away. Still holding out a uh, hope for solid structures.
Over this way, we have some weird white debris. I wonder if this is supposed to be from the pyramid fighting back, or if the white stuff is just more pyramid ship debris. Hard to know for sure, because I'm pretty sure we weren't expected to see this rubble quite so up close. That might as well give this very intangible looking surface the foot test. Just want to make sure that I can get the grapple back easily. And it is not solid. Alas. Well, this does seem to be connected directly to the tree, so... I suppose you could say at this point that we have definitely touched it. Although it looks like the vines we see all over the raid are also connected to it. Well, there goes that flight. But yeah, it is a long way down. You can see how close my grapple is to charged, too. If only it charged in the air after grappling. I wonder if using other abilities might help with that. I don't know. At least Super recovers it completely. <laughs> there we go. Well, back to the grind. Still gotta see just how close to this tree we can get. We've got another one of the uh, major roots here. And man, those uh, branches come down pretty far. They might be in reach too. The weird kind of distorted bending that it's doing isn't... Uh, doing any favors for figuring out which one of those branches is lowest. At the very least I know that this one is touchable. Not the root, that is. I also don't know what direction the true edge is oriented. If we knew that, we would know which part of the tree is most likely to be within the true edge. Let's see if we can maybe touch one of those lower branches. Getting rather close here. Like, close enough that we can see the true size of the tree. And I can almost taste... never mind. <laughs> All right, well, maybe we can reach the stem, because I think that was still the height. If you go back and look, you'll see that my grapple didn't actually appear, which means maybe we can use the grapple to kind of detect the true edge earlier. Which would be pretty handy, since we don't really have a good way of doing that. Of course, to do that, I'll want to... Oh. Yep. Perhaps not early warning enough. Anyways, perhaps next time you do the raid, grab a 3-4 checkpoint and see what you can find.